what we're doing today is we are going to install a boost gauge and what I have bought is the cheapest boost gauge uh, found on Amazon. It was $10.99. Well, I'll take it back. It was the cheapest prime one. And it's not, I'm not going to leave it in the car because I, as bad as the interior is in this thing, it's not hacked up. You know, there's no screws, screw holes drilled in anything. It's just, so I'm not going to. I'm not going to do that. So what I'm going to do is just use this to tune the car, uh, make sure the turbo's putting out what it should and all that kind of stuff. So we're going to just temporarily put it in the car. And so what I'm going to do, um, we're going to make sure we're getting boost to the Alda. And I think that's a decent place to check the boost. Um, so what we've got here is this is the boost line so I'm gonna cut this line right here and we're gonna tee in this gauge and it came with a T and it came with some hose so we're gonna tee in there and use that as our place to check now what this is you've got a fitting right here on the back of the intake manifold and it has this this uh, plastic hose that connects to it. That plastic hose runs over here and it goes into this valve right here which is a um, it's a boost protection circuit or whatever you want to call it. Uh, I think it cuts off at 13 psi or something like that maybe 15 somewhere around there and what it does is it it bleeds off the boost if it gets too high uh, otherwise it should pass the boost on through to this side of it which goes over to the Alda which uh, enriches your fuel so as you get more boost the injection pump the Alda on the injection pump uh, gives the engine tells the injection pump to give the engine more fuel based on how much boost that's how the system is supposed to work. Uh, a lot of times the Aldos fail, there's a diaphragm in here. I checked mine a while back and uh, it held a vacuum, so it seems to be still functional. I do know that um, th this uh, T, this little fitting right here on the manifold, they are bad about clogging up. Mine was clogged when I bought this car. I cleaned it out and I noticed uh, quite a bit of performance increase after I did that also cleaned right here at this um, th this solenoid is bad about uh, getting sticky or uh, getting plugged up as well so I cleaned that as well when I was doing all this and made sure I could get I could blow through this line I blew back through make sure I could blow through the intake manifold and I could so we should be good um, that wasn't that long ago uh, course it could be plugged up again who knows but uh, I think right here is a good spot to check so we are going to cut this right here and TN uh, our gauge so let me do that real quick we got it temporarily installed there was a screw hole for this bottom panel which I have off so I just put it right there um, and just put it through that screw hole and like I said this is temporary and that tie wrap was already on the gauge I guess I could cut that off it was part of the packaging um, so what I did was I ran it uh, there was a hole in the firewall for one of the vacuum lines um, looked like for an extra one because it's not one that was in there so it was just a little hole in a grommet but it was not big enough to pass through this plastic tubing, this plastic uh, tube hose, whatever you call it. So I had a piece of this plastic vacuum line, and so I ran that through and then just connected the tube, this stuff, the hose, to that plastic tubing, and of course hooked that in there. And then a short piece of hose on the inside connecting it to the gauge. So 
so it'll work. So let's start it up. Let's see what we got. Like I said, this is just a temporary gauge. there so let me let the engine warm up and then we'll we'll check it I flipped it around so I could see the boost side of it better um, like I said we're using this as a diagnostics tool this is not going to stay mounted in here I just needed to get it stable somewhere where I could see it uh, while driving that seemed to be an easy out of the way spot. So like I said, let's let the engine warm up and we will see if we've got boost. I have a feeling we're gonna have some. So 
definitely needs some adjustment. First, first gear shift is too soon. That's the only one. Everything else, I need to see how I can get just first gear adjusted because everything else is perfect. Uh, and once this thing gets on the freeway, you know, you can see like right now it's really not producing much boost. But once you get it on the freeway and the RPMs get up to around 3,000, it's producing quite a bit more boost and uh, it's got really good power on the freeway but anything under 3,000 rpms and it's just it doesn't have much power but like I said once you get cruising on the freeway you know if you need to accelerate on the freeway it does it does decent you know it just it needs that higher RPM and uh, boost that it gets at the higher RPM. See, that's 3,000 right there. And it's hitting, by the time it gets to 3,000 RPMs, it's hitting 7 PSI boost. And it just, it doesn't, you know, that's, that's where the wastegates start to bleed it off. Once it gets to 7, that's it. So we're going to adjust the wastegate. I'll look up and see what, at what pressure the um, that, uh, valve, you know, uh, releases. I want to think it's like, it's either 13 or 15 or something like that. Maybe 17. It's somewhere in there. And that'll tell me kind of where I need to set my boost. But, uh, you know, we've got it shifting good. So we should see, and the engine's up to temperature. So we should see, you know, a lot more boost than seven. Definitely should see over ten. So let's uh, let me look up the specs on it, and we will see if we can adjust and get a few more pounds of boost out of it. <laughs> 